What's happening, everyone? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And today, Andrew and I are talking about training in multiple styles at the same time, or if you want to be kind of nerdy about it, concurrently. It's a good Ooh. word. Stick around. We'll tell you everything that we think about doing that and when you should and when you shouldn't. We are a couple of passionate, traditional martial artists, and that's why we do the things that we do here on the show. And if you want to see all the things that we do as a company, because the company does more than just this show and the company is more than just us, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find a bunch of stuff over there, including our store, which has stuff like apparel and training equipment and programs and cool stuff like that, plus more. And if you use the code podcast15, it's going to save you 15% off anything that you find over there. The show, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, gets its own website, and it is whistlekickmartialartsradio.com because we keep things easy. We have well over 700 episodes, and you can check all of them out for free. They're on YouTube. They're in your podcast feed. If, if there's a place that has podcasts, you'll probably find it. There. <laughs> Missed a word. The show comes out twice a week with the goal of connecting, educating, and entertaining the traditional martial artists of the world. If you want to show your support for what we're doing, well, you've got some ways you can do that. You can make a purchase, you can tell a friend, or join our Patreon. If you think the new shows we're putting out are worth 63 cents a piece, you might consider supporting us at the $5 tier. Guess what? There's even a $2 tier. At $2 a month, you find out who's coming on the show. At $5, we give you bonus audio. At $10, we give you bonus video content, and it moves up from there. In the top tiers, you get access to our school owner's mastermind. You could support us and write it off and get access to an absolutely wonderful tool to help your school grow. But if you want the full list, all the things you could do to help us in our mission, go to whistlekick.com slash family. Andrew. Yes. I think there are few topics that are more argued in the martial arts world than should I train one thing and then go on and train another thing? Or I should I train one thing and train in another thing at the same time? Yeah. Uh, and this is not a uh, black and white. It's always this case, no. but it often comes from the sides of MMA guys like to train lots of things at once. Mm -hmm. And traditional guys typically train one thing at once not, mm -hmm. it's not not all the time there's always exceptions but in general that's a fairly accurate summation as to where those two camps come from sure sure I, I think you know this is the idea of mastery versus diversity we've done an episode mm -hmm. i believe it was called just that yep and it gets complicated by the fact that some instructors traditional instructors will not permit and i'm using air quotes because you know but whether or not they have the authority to do that is is up for discussion but they will not permit their students to train elsewhere while they are training with them now mm -hmm. some of those instructors are doing it for nefarious reasons i'm afraid you're going to find the school you like better and you're going to leave and i'm going to lose a student i'm going to lose money for purposes of this conversation let's not worry about that let's yeah. worry about the legitimate concerns Mm -hmm. And so let, let's articulate those. What are the concerns? Because on the surface, the more stuff you train, the more you know, the better off you are. Yep, yep. But I, I think everybody would say, like, if I have more tools in my toolbox, obviously that's a better thing. So yeah. why and, wouldn't this just be a cut and dry issue? Yeah, yeah. And if listeners have listened to the show for any length of time, they will likely know that both you and I are advocates of learning different things. Yes. Right. And so one might think, well, this is easy. Like the guys are just going to say you should do it. And that's the end of the discussion. But I think there's a lot of nuance to this that people might not realize. There wouldn't be an episode of that's how we felt. Yeah. It would be, it would be like the a, world's shortest episode. Yeah. Which we, we do always joke about. Say, and do it. Happen. And then we do the outro and close the show. And <laughs> it'd be really boring. Um, yeah, but there are a lot of things to think about, you know, they, yeah. that, you know, and I have training in multiple styles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I hold rank in multiple styles. I didn't train all of those styles at the same time, though. And I think that's an important distinction. It is. So let's talk about 
where the concerns come from because I, I I think I think the the benefits are fairly obvious. Knowing different things is good. Let's pretend it's cooking, right? Let's let's forget about all the the, the semi political drama within the martial arts industry. If you want to be a really good French cook, and your goal is to be the best possible French cook you can you can be are you going to spend time learning how to be a better i don't know polynesian cook no probably not no because it it it's going to have some it's going to muddy the waters a bit and if nothing else it reduces the time that you're spending practicing your craft Yep. And I think that this is the heart of the issue. If you want to be the best you can be at, I don't know, Muay Thai, spending a heck of a lot of time training Muay Thai makes a lot of sense. Yep. Seeking out different Muay Thai teachers, maybe you're competing in Muay Thai competition for a whole bunch of years. And I think it applies in the same way to every other style. If your goal yep. is to be the best you can be at that, you want to invest as much time as possible into that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think the part of the conversation that people often don't realize is as a beginner, training multiple styles at once is incredibly difficult and in some yes. ways will be detrimental yes. to trying to learn any of them yep. unless those styles are vastly different as an example if you want to learn muay thai as an example and at the same time learn judo those two skill sets are incredibly different if you want to be training in shotokan karate and also train in shore and root karate at the same time that is a an, an, a recipe for disaster in You're my speaking opinion. from experience absolutely um as an example and especially given that the forms in those styles kata the kata are very very similar um, 95 percent, would you say yeah absolutely and in one dojo you would have to do this particular punch i'm thinking of the kata teki shodan or naifanchi mm -hmm. um in the shoto on my shotokan club it was a the fists came straight across like a regular fist so mm -hmm. palms down for both of yep. them but in my shoren ru dojo it's a vertical fist yeah. so the palm is to the side and you turn back and that super 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 similar but still different it's hard to switch in and out of those different mindsets. Correct. And I will admit that, you know, I, I've trained in a bunch of different schools and I never had a difficult time learning a, a form that was completely unlike anything else. It was the ones that were 80% similar that I really struggled with. Yep. Yep. But if you were training again, going back to Muay Thai and Judo, those two skill sets are different. And so going to your judo class, you're not going to accidentally throw a uh, sweeping leg kick. Yeah, you're, you're, you're probably not messing those two up yeah. when, when you're doing randori. Uh, so that, that, that kind of brings to light an element. You talked about those two different styles that you trained. Now, you mm -hmm. learned Shotokan first and then transitioned in Shoren Room. Yep. So you were able to kind of unlearn some of those details of Shotokan kind of put them on the shelf, put them aside, not because you didn't like them or didn't value them, but because you were focused on Shore and Rue. Yep. And, and once you I, worked through that, it was less of an issue. Yes. And I was already, I had been at my Shotokan club for 16 years. I was already mm. a third degree black belt. Then I left, moved. I didn't, you know, leave for any nefarious reason. I just moved away yeah. uh, and joined a, a local Shorenru Dojo here in town, but I had enough of enough wherewithal to understand what I was learning because I had progressed to a certain level within one style. Um, Jesse Enkamp has talked about this great analogy that I love. 
about learning martial arts as a mountain. Mm -hmm. And the top of the mountain is like ma quote, uh, mastery. I put in air quotes because can sure. you ever really master anything, right? But when you're at the base of the mountain, whether if you're learning Taekwondo and you know, all around the base of the mountain are these different martial arts, Taekwondo, Judo, Shornu, Karate, Shotokan, all these other ones. Yeah. The distance between each of them at the base of the mountain is very far. Yeah. And as you're learning Taekwondo, you're, you're marching up the mountain to get better at Taekwondo and everyone else is marching up the mountain in their, in their art. And then halfway up the mountain, Taekwondo is now a lot closer to Judo or to all these, and you go up even more and they're all closer. So yeah. I, I love that analogy because analogy. I think it's very true. I think it's very, very valid. Um, and and I, I talk to my students about that quite a bit, always making sure that they know I didn't come up with this, <laughs> Jesse did. <clears throat> um, and so I am not a proponent of martial artists training multiple styles as a beginner i i for me it's right around brown belt level that you've got enough of an understanding of your own system to then be able to you, know, you already know how your body moves you know how the style works you can start to then think about how other ways other other schools and styles do things but you've got to get in my opinion a strong foundation first and I think that that's kind of the line in the sand is, do you understand the fundamentals of the art that you were training such that it is second nature, that your instructor's not saying, you know, we keep talking about this stance here and, and you know, your weight distribution's not right. You know, you've been training here three, four years. You should know this, right? You're, you, you really should be on the other side of that. You should know your basic stances, kicks, blocks, right? Like once you get there, then I think the door is open. Doesn't mean everybody should go through it, but the door is open for cross training. And, you know, that, that doesn't mean, you know, you, you talked about moving and needing to go elsewhere. That doesn't mean that when you, if you've been training six months, 12 months in Shotokan and you move somewhere and the only option is Shornru that you shouldn't train, it no, just means different. that you're probably going to have a hard time unlearning and relearning. Sure. Because you've put that time in. But of course, you know, we go back to some fundamentals that we believe here. Training is better than not training. Any training is better than no training. Yep. And there's likely to be some benefit that you may not even realize even after six or 12 months. You know, you, you, may, you may find that you've got a slightly different way of doing something that's perfectly acceptable in the new facility, the new school that your, your peers may not have. Yep. Absolutely. <clears throat> but again, it's all about the why, if you are looking to do competitive MMA, whether it's amateur or professional, like training in multiple styles at once is something that you're going to want to do, but it all comes down to the why. I've also known people who have cross-trained not so much for style, but for element. Um, I've known people who have trained at this school for their sparring, this school for their forms, this school mm -hmm. for their weapons sure. concurrently. Yep. And I think that can also work too. Again, you likely need some foundational level of technique. It's probably in the three, four year mark yep. before that's going to make sense. But I've also known people who train at schools where sparring is is barely a thing that they do, and they you know they want to be better competitively at point sparring or, or some other variant of sparring, mm -hmm. and their instructor says, "Yeah, you should go you know go to sparring nights down the road at such and such a place, yeah, get better there." Yeah, I, I agree. The fun. three to four year mark is 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 again around late green brown, depending on yeah. you know the school that you're at. Um, you know, I recently am starting up, and I know you know this, Jeremy, but mm -hmm. a once a month training session here in town, and the session is only for brown and black belts, or equivalent, right? Taekwondo yeah. doesn't use brown, they use red, but, you know, something equivalent, and the concept is we're, we will have a different instructor every month teaching mm -hmm. something new, 
you know, the first month is going to be a Goju, Gojuru instructor, next, the month after, I don't know, but it's going to be different each month. And I have had a little bit of pushback from some people saying, hey, you know, I, I'm a green belt. I've been training two years. Like, how come I can't come to this thing? And my number one reason is, in my opinion, you should get a firmer grasp of what you're currently learning and not be expected to come this once a month and learn a different way to do it and then have it mess up your training at your school. Let's pull it back to the analogy that you made about the mountain, um, mm-hmm. which I don't know that that's Jesse's analogy. Uh, I've definitely he heard was, it elsewhere. He was the one that I heard it from first. And, and, and it, may, it may well be his. I, I've heard it in so many places now, and I, and I really do like it. I just, um, on the off chance that somebody out there knows who said it first, I don't want them to think that we're, we're ignoring that possibility. Um, there's a point where, as you start climbing, if things, if, if Taekwondo gets closer to Shotokan, gets closer to Muay Thai, it must mean that there is enhanced understanding and potentially even new technique. So that means if you aren't making that progress up the mountain, you're missing out on things. Mm-hmm. You know, if I come to, you know, if, I, if I'm 500 feet up from, from base camp and then I keep making all these lateral moves around, I'm not really ever moving up. Correct. Yep. I could go to intro classes for French cooking and Polynesian cooking and Spanish cooking. And I don't know, is, is there even British cooking? <laughs> <laughs> but um, tsh- um, that's a playful joke aimed at a, a few people I know that listen to the show that will likely message me and say, ha. Um, but if I keep going to these survey courses, yeah, I will know how to do the bare minimum in each of these different culinary styles. But no one's ever going to say, man, Jeremy's a really good French chef or even chef. They'll say, you know what? No matter what you give Jeremy, he can put together a meal that won't kill you and it'll probably taste okay. Nobody's getting hired for that. Nobody's being celebrated for that. No one is really admired for that. You're just, you're, you're grabbing as much as you can. There are times where that's relevant, but I think within a martial arts context, it's not really relevant. It's not, it's not a, I don't think that's a goal that benefits people. Yeah. Yeah. We're on the same page there. I think so. And, you know, and, and to put numbers on it, uh, and again, this is this is not a black yeah. and white thing. No. Um, but in, let's say you start in one school, let's say Taekwondo, and it takes you six years to to get to this level, mm-hmm. and then someone else over here is doing Shotokan Karate. It takes them six years. But if you take your six years and then move over to Shotokan, what took someone else six years is only going to take you three years. So you learned Taekwondo in six years and Shotokan in three years. So that's nine years. But if you try and train both of them the same time, it's not going to be nine years to learn both. It's going to be, in my opinion, probably longer. You know, it might take you 10, 11, 12 years to get to the same level. Whereas if you had stayed in one thing for a while, understood that and then moved over to something else, the transferability of things is exponential. Yeah. I, I'm at a point now because I've trained in a variety of different schools. I've earned black belts in, in several different styles that I can step in as a white belt pretty much anywhere and really start getting into the meat of what I'm training pretty quickly. And while, while you know, advanced rank and everything isn't really important to me, learning is. Sure. And so being able to take this language, we've used that analogy of language on the show quite a, quite a few times, you know, forms being poems, et cetera. I can speak a bunch of different languages. Yeah. You know, they, they, they may have some overlap. Think of the romance languages, French, German, Spanish, that are kind of similar. I've got a language that's similar to just about everything I could do. And that helps me learn it faster. Yep, I'm with you. Okay. So to summarize, training concurrently can make sense if it helps you achieve your goals, number one. 
And number two is done in such a way that you are not devaluing the training you've already done by confusing yourself. And I will say that there may be some younger students, younger in terms of training age, not chronologically, not age. Yeah. who don't understand this because they haven't been around longer. Mm -hmm. You might think, well, Jeremy, Andrew, I, I, don't, I don't really get it. Like, what is it, you know, I train Shotokan now, what is it about going to Muay Thai and going to some Muay Thai classes down the street? You know, I've been training for 18 months. Like, I don't see the problem because there are some things you only see in hindsight. Yeah. And this is where trusting and speaking with instructors and everything becomes really relevant. And I would encourage you to do that. That's something that's important to you. Okay. Anything we should add before we move on? No, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think, okay. I think that's pretty good. Awesome. Well, thank you to all of you watching or listening. If you have follow-up, if you have feedback, if you have questions or comments, post them. Post them on the Facebook group, uh, Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes. Email us, jeremy at whistlekick.com, andrew at whistlekick, martial arts radio .com. We bring you two shows a week. And if you want to go deeper on this or any other episode, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. If you're willing to support us in the work that we do, you have a number of options. You might consider buying one of our Amazon books, maybe telling others about the show or supporting us at Patreon. Patreon.com slash whistlekick is a place for that. If you, ooh, it's upside down. I know. Oops. Oops. Oops, you <laughs> did it again. If you're interested in having me come out for a seminar at your school, let me know. We can see what we can do on that. And you've got the code podcast15, saves you 15% on anything at whistlekick.com. Guest suggestions, topics, you name it, we want to hear it. Let us know. Our social media is at whistlekick. I'm Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew's Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And that's all for now. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, and have a great, a great day. day.